You've probably seen a thousand videos already that are telling you stop start is bad and to turn it off immediately and that it's going to damage your engine. But if you drive a hybrid, the stop start could actually be saving your engine. In this video, we're going to look at an often overlooked issue that affects drivers of hybrid vehicles. And there's no hard and fast rule here. We just need to understand what's going on inside the engine, what the problem is, and how to mitigate that problem judiciously using the stop start system. We have to note at this point that not all drivers of hybrid have got an option to turn off the stop start because it is so completely integrated into the entire system. And to a certain extent, you're then at the mercy of the manufacturer and whether they've programmed an intelligent set of criteria into the start stop system to prevent these problems. We still have the option of switching the engine off completely and going for a long drive every now and then and going for a spirited drive. With a lot of hybrid, you can control whether the engine cuts in or or whether you run on motor by the speed. Some have a car park setting that restricts you to electric only power at lower speeds. For many, it's about 27 miles an hour is always done on electric and just kicking it up to 30 miles an hour will force the internal combustion engine to come on. It's going to depend on your journey, the journey time, how you're using the car, but just understanding the potential problems that are associated with hybrid engines and how to minimize this oil degradation will help you to go some way to extending the life of that hybrid. The crux of this problem is oil dilution. This is where contaminants get into the oil. And by contaminants, we're primarily discussing fuel and water or condensation. Where's this come from? Well. The combustion process happens inside the cylinders, inside the crankcase, and you don't ever have a perfect seal on that piston wall. Something is going to escape this combustion process and leak into the crankcase, especially when you consider the high amounts of pressure that the combustion process is exerting. This is especially accelerated when the engine is cold because those metal components haven't fully expanded. You're going to get greater oil dilution. Now, why is oil dilution bad? Well, oil dilution affects the viscosity of the oil. The more viscous an oil is, the more sticky it is. And it dilutes the viscosity down, making the oil thinner, more slippery, and it can push it outside the manufacturer's tolerances and the needs of your vehicle. The end result is thinner, wetter oil. In extreme cases, the contamination of oil can actually be seen. If you lift the filler cap off, you will notice a creamy mayonnaise-like substance in the oil. And that's where all of these components have mixed in with the oil. And you notice it much more on hybrids than on other vehicles. It was classically a sign that your cylinder head was going when this happened, showing that the coolant had started getting into the oil. But with modern engine designs, there are other issues or other routes for moisture or water to get into the oil. Now, the thing with hybrid cars, is the engine isn't on all the time. They run much cooler than conventional engines. Essentially, you're running on a colder engine more of the time when you have a hybrid vehicle because the electric power is taking over for some of that. And that's why we need to be especially careful in how we drive our hybrid if we want to avoid this problem of oil dilution. We're going to look at the problem in detail. I'm going to go into a lot of detail in this video. We're also going to look at some mitigations that you as a driver can put in place. And then that thorny question at the end, we're going to answer, when should you use stop start? Any fuel that enters the oil typically burns off when the oil starts to heat up. Burning off is probably the wrong term, but the moisture and the fuel that's inside the oil will reduce measurably so when the engine reaches a decent operating temperature and sustains that for a period of time. While I was researching this, I came across an interesting thing in Blackstone Labs, and they compared an internal combustion engine with a hybrid engine and looked at this problem of fuel dilution. If you set the threshold of fuel dilution at over 2% of the oil, fairly significant in terms of diluting the oil down, 31% of hybrid vehicles had that, whereas only 18% of conventional combustion engine cars had that. Clearly, we have a situation here where hybrids are more susceptible to this oil dilution. Because the hybrid engine is not always running and you're running on the electric motor for large durations of the journey, it depends a lot on how we use the car, obviously. but this fuel and moisture is sitting inside the cylinders and has more of a chance to run down into the crankcase than it would do if the engine was running all of the time. 
hybrid cars certainly present a challenge to the motor industry and the oil industry and great strides have gone forward. We're discussing this as a problem, but the engineers are aware of this situation and they have already mitigated it to a large extent in careful formulation of the oil and also in the way the engine is designed with much tighter tolerances than we've seen traditionally on older vehicles. But if you take a fairly thin zero W20 oil and add just a few percent of fuel, you can see that really hitting fairly close to the grade of a zero W10 or lower. You're pushing the oil spec far out of what the manufacturer has specified. Thinner oil can starve the bearings and create a much thinner protective film where it's going to shear away more quickly. Fuel also has an effect on the additive package within the oil. We've got to remember that oil isn't just oil. There's a whole slew of additives in there to give you the qualities that your engine actually needs. And fuel can interfere with this and degrade some of those other qualities or properties that the engine manufacturer has designed or requires. Fuel dilution into the engine oil will increase the risk of having piston deposit formation happening. And it can also lead to increased corrosion and oxidation. We've also got to add into this the problem of the oil capacity. So you've put the set amount of oil in the sump and now you're adding fuel and moisture to it. The oil level is going to increase. And in extreme cases, if that level is too high, that can cause running problems and running issues. I've done a few videos in the past on overfilling your motor oil. So you might want to check those out just to see what the implications are of having too much oil in your system. Manufacturers have specified an oil, a very specific specification of oil with a specific additive package. They've designed and engineered the engine to cope better with these unusual low infrequent operating temperatures that you get in hybrids. But we as a driver can do a little bit more to just guarantee the longevity of our car. If we shorten the oil change intervals, we're spending less time with this diluted oil in the engine. And that's particularly essential if we only do short city drives or if our use of the car means we very rarely use the combustion engine part of the vehicle. Keeping the engine oil dilution level below that 2% threshold can require oil changes at three to 4,000 miles. So much shorter than most people actually do. Again, our use of the car is going to have a big impact on that. The only real way we can know is by sending the oil off for analysis and just seeing what the situation is in our car, in our particular use case of that car. Never cheap out on the oil we buy. The oil is essential more so in hybrid engines. The formulations that have been made take into account these running conditions. And you can't really just use any old oil in a modern hybrid vehicle. You've got a very high tech engine. You need a high tech oil. We're limiting ourselves to very, very specific types of synthetic oil and additive packages that will cope with these unusual demands. Driving habits as well come into it. If we only take short drives, we're potentially causing more of a problem for ourselves and our engine. We really do need the engine to get up to operating temperature. And if we're driving a hybrid, that might mean driving harder, might mean taking longer journeys. We've really got to ask ourselves, is a hybrid the ideal car for me? Just as some owners of particulate filters in diesel engines have had problems because they only do short journeys, the recommendation with hybrids may well turn out to be avoid them if you only do short journeys. Now, the bulk of this problem happens with idling. When the engine is idling and when the engine is idling cold, that increases phenomenally the amount of oil dilution that is taking place. This really is where we come back to the question we raised at the beginning with stop start. Using your stop start system will mitigate this problem. It will stop the car idling. Now, if the engine is warm and you've been doing a lot of spirited driving, you may well decide to turn start stop off. That's fine. No problem at all with that. You've had an opportunity to burn off all the moisture that has built up in the oil and all the contaminants to a certain extent. But if we're on a cold engine, we're doing short journeys, that idling could be fatal. So we need to leave our stop start system engaged so the engine shuts off automatically. We have to note at this point that not all drivers of hybrid have got an option to turn off the stop start because it is so completely integrated into the entire system. Manufacturers have been tweaking the software and the modern stop start is very different to the older stop start system. 
it looks at a whole slew of problems inside the engine. Sometimes you've got to weigh up whether you want the engine to idle a little bit to allow it to warm up, whether you're in constant stop start traffic or whether you're having long periods of stoppages and all of these take into account the temperature of the engine and make an intelligent decision for you. In most cases then, with the modern auto stop start system on hybrid cars, it's recommended we actually use it. Ignore the advice to switch it off. That is not going to help your engine at all. Check the oil level frequently. Now you're not just checking the level is at the maximum, you're checking if it rises, if that oil level is increasing, that is a classic sign that you're experiencing oil dilution. And you may also notice this mayonnaise forming under the filler cap itself. And if that's the case, that's a sign that your oil is becoming diluted. If you're in that situation, change the oil, get an oil change done sooner rather than later. So with careful driving, actually using the throttle and driving the car as it was intended and avoiding those short journeys on the hybrid will make a big difference to the longevity of your car. We have to stand back and say a lot of these cars are Toyotas and Lexus and they have a supreme reputation for reliability. But most manufacturers now have some kind of hybrid option. It seems to be the halfway ground between going fully electric and sticking with an internal combustion engine vehicle. And in some cases, a hybrid car may not be suitable for us and our driving style. We've discussed the other problem that you get with hybrid vehicles with the 12 volt battery dying if you don't use it often enough. You might want to check out that video as well if you're thinking of buying a hybrid vehicle. But for many people, hybrids are just great. They produce fantastic fuel economy, they're convenient, they're easy, they're relatively cheap to run. And if we as a driver just take into account the things that we can do to reduce the problem of oil dilution, we'll go a long way to maximising the longevity of our hybrid vehicle. Please could you boot the like button, that really does help us to get out there. Thanks for all your support and encouragement and your comments are all read and I really do appreciate all of the pointers and if I've missed anything out or I've got something wrong, let me know. Don't be shy. I know you're not. And I love the pedants out there. We need these people to pick up on the fine points that I've missed or the little nuances that maybe bug you. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. That'll help us as well. And I've lined up this video and this playlist for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.